member orientation institutions and um, I love how Aaron Burroughs who is our staff lead working at Seattle University Aaron B has let us know four time zones 15 states and the District of Columbia so this is awesome and a great growth um, of the network in the last several years so thank you everyone who's been part of that um, and these are the the names of the institutions um, you can see yourself there, and if you don't see yourself there, you can let us know, uh, and we can help your, you and your institution become a member. Next slide, please. So we thought we would start with this question about like what compels us to do this work. Um, and so I thought I would just begin by telling you what compels me in this work. And um, I've been working in uh, you know service learning and community engagement and leadership education, really for my whole professional career. So more than 25 years at this point. And I was really drawn to the place-based justice network and its work when my institution, St. Mary's, was starting a really ambitious plan to do some place-based work with one of our community partners, um, a housing community for formerly homeless families. And so I really wanted to be in relationship and connected to other folks who are thinking about questions of what it means to make long-term community-driven relationships and commitments. And so PBGN was a great place for that for me. And some of that was also emerging for me at the same time when I realized we needed more attention to issues of equity and justice and race and racism and how those things um, are represented in the work that we do in communities and with communities. And I wanted a place of both support and accountability for that for me as an individual and as my team and my institution. So that's what compels me to do the work. And I guess at its biggest place or its biggest kind of frame for me is what compels me to do the work is that I feel that if I am not working towards creating a more just and equitable world that I've kind of lost an opportunity to put my best skills and talents to work in the world. So um, what I'd like to do is invite you to drop into the chat. What would be some of your um, thoughts about what compels you to do this work? Um, what made you think Place-Based Justice Network could be a place for you to connect? Um, and Aaron's right, not a breakout room yet. We're just gonna put this part in the chat. So go ahead and we'll take a minute and see what folks put in the chat in terms of what compels you in your work. John Loggins, always leading with love. Thank you, John. Creating space for folks. Making sure our work is grounded from a place of justice. Um, Thank you, Matthew. Whoa, they're coming fast now. Mm -hmm. Looking for a stronger racial justice frame. Yes, Elaine, I hope that that is something that you can find here. All right, Gavin's going to take us down the road of neo deconstructing neoliberalism. All right, um, some alignment with personal and professional. Awesome. Grassroots change, honoring voices of communities. 
increasing access, building sustainable relationships in a neighborhood. Erica, thank you. You're looking to figure out how to make long-term commitment in the community, um, in, the, in the neighborhood there. Julie, thank you also for reminding us to be that education is really coming out of a commitment to justice. And I think, you know, figuring out how we turn those ideas into practice is always um, a process, right? It's a praxis. Um, and Fran, thank you for the, you know, equal, equal balance, um, or even sometimes we would perhaps preference community um, transformation above our student learning um, outcomes or campus desires. Huh. Let's think about what livable really means, Justin. That's a great question. And how do we make that happen? Um, hmm. Dan, I love the end of your comment about how to be a better listener. Um, that's, I think, such a profound way to think about what this work is and what it means to be in community. So I really want to thank you all who um, kind of welcomed yourself into this space through the chat. And I mean, I, it feels awesome to be with you in this square circle of Zoom today <laughs> and knowing that that those are the questions and desires that you bring. Um, I'm going to give you a little sense of our agenda for this morning. Um, I'm gonna share a little bit about the history. We'll hear from um, Fran Lowe, our colleague at the University of Washington about uh, the purpose and values of the Place-Based Justice Network. Um, and then Anthony Medina of Gonzaga and Aaron Burroughs and some other colleagues, I think John Loggins are gonna share what some of the program offerings are. So kind of what some of the benefits and opportunities are of being part of Place-Based Justice Network. So, so our history, um, is that, uh, so we are closing in on our 10 year anniversary. I'll, I'll say that as we're in the fall of 2021, um, we're almost there, but you know, there's Seattle University has been um, kind of the animating and invitational force behind this idea of place-based justice work and the place-based justice network. So you see the first gathering was in 2014 where 12 institutions came together um, and then between 2015 and 2017, we expanded to include, you know, 25 universities participating in multi-day institutes. And we've had the generosity of the Annie E. Casey Foundation to help fund our work up to this point in our, um, in our, in our growing up story as an organization, if you will. Um, and then in 2018, we came together again, a group of us, um, to talk about, wow, this seems to be a something that is being birthed. <laughs> so what are the core values that we would identify for that? What are the structures that might work? And what are the activities that seem to make sense for this group of people who are dedicated to place-based justice? You might also be familiar with um, the book, Place-Based Community Engagement in Higher Education, by um, Kent Coth at Seattle University, as well as Erica Yamamura, also of Seattle, or previously of Seattle. Um, she, the two of them did a multi-campus study about this emergent idea of place-based justice. So if you want the long form description of what this work is, you can certainly consult that text. Thanks, Erin. Fran, you're up. Awesome. Hi, everybody. It's good to see you all today. Uh, just a quick intro. My name is Fran Lowe. I use she, her pronouns, and I serve as the executive director of the Community Engagement and Leadership Education Center at the University of Washington in Seattle. So it's great to be with you all. Um, I'm a, a, I just recently joined the steering committee of the Place-Based Justice Network, and um, uh, I find it fitting for me to be sharing with you the, the purpose and values of this network. You know, I, I think there's so many like professional organizations and communities of practice that we can all, there's so many wonderful groups out there 
um, I was just so um, uh, struck by the, the purpose and the values of this particular network that makes me really feel compelled to um, really lean, lean into um, the wisdom of this group. So just to share uh, and read <clears throat> aloud, the purpose of the Place-Based Justice Network is, we are a learning community committed to transforming higher education and our communities by deconstructing systems of oppression through place-based community engagement. And the values that undergird this network are as follows. We are committed to an anti-oppression framework that recognizes intersectionality. We pursue partnerships and initiatives that are long-term, reciprocal, and grounded in a deliberative process. We emphasize actions that are defined by community-identified goals that foster self-determination. We recognize that change occurs through continuous individual and collective learning and action. And we honor that this work involves openness, integrity, and humility. So I want to invite us to just kind of sit with these values. And in a minute, we're going to go into a few, uh, some breakout rooms. And just for a few minutes, I'm just share with those in your breakout room, you know, which, which, what is most resonating with you today from the Place-Based Justice Network values. But it's always important to ground ourselves in the values that really guides all of our work. So I think Aaron will be sending us out into breakout rooms in a minute. And we'll have about seven minutes five to seven minutes in these breakout rooms. Well, maybe they heard me and we're just staying in our breakout rooms. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hi, Erin. Hi, all. Welcome back. All right. I hope you all had a great chance to get to know a couple other folks in this space. And uh, for me, it was just Nice to always ground myself in the values of, of this network and as we talk about how to turn those values into continued action. So thank you, everybody. Am I up? I think so, Erin, if we could get the slide that starts to talk about the offerings. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. All right. Well, um, hello again, peace and love. I am John Loggins. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm out of the University uh, of San Diego. And uh, I have been in this role or within this, our Center for Community Engagement for um, uh, over 20 years now. Um, and and I'm, I'm naming that now because I don't really like to name it because it, it ages me and, and dates me, uh, but like to maybe share a little bit of the, my trajectory and kind of why and what I get out of this program because like I think I've been tasked with sharing a little bit about you know what member institutions and what you as individuals could be getting out of this program and for me it's it's, it's meant a lot um, you know big picture wise you know like uh, our opportunity to influence the field influence higher education on what place-based community engagement is and what it's capable of uh, you know I think 
uh, thinking of my career and thinking about like when there's been pivotal moments in, in the shift from service learning or volunteerism to service learning to community engagement, like there, there's been really uh, provocative thought leaders and, and energies. I think of Nadine Cruz, you know, doing work with Campus Compact and talking about relationships. Uh, when Tania Mitchell put out uh, critical versus traditional service learning, all those were big moments in like, you know, how I saw the work because, you know, at that time I, you know, and still am, I consider myself a pracademic. Like I, I, I practice more than I am trying to offer uh, like wisdom and create new knowledge. But what Nadine, what Tania had written really did resonate and it matched with what I was doing in the community. I think a lot of us know that the work we do in the community is valuable, how it's taken up and, and how we are, are doing it. Uh, was affirmed by what they were sharing. And uh, with crit with both of their work, I think it kind of leads us down to this road to like understanding where our community partners are from. And uh, the more I was doing this work, the more I was committed to seeing community engagement being a tool for anti-racism and anti-oppression. And um, that is very much what the Place-Based Justice Network does. Um, and I can struggle with that on my campus and, and work to, and I say struggle with it because I know, uh, you know, our campus has these great values and they're committed to it, but I, I do think that there needs to be uh, entities and, and coalitions and bodies on campus that pushes toward, towards that because I, I think we still do a lot of the traditional community service and community uh, volunteering. But if we wanted to push the field further, like, you know, uh, it's not just USD that needs to do this work. I think this is work that uh, I think all institutions need to take up. It's, uh, it's conversations that we need to be having with uh, ourselves as, as community engagement professionals about like the work that we're doing, how we're doing it, what's the impact on it? Are we doing more harm than good? All these big questions uh, that need to be asked and, and pushed forward. And uh, it's hard to do by yourself. You can go out and present at a conference. <laughs> you can go out and, and share your thoughts in a, in a white paper or publish an article, uh, which are all great ways to do it, but like to do it within a network, um, I, I find is, is, is a great way to uh, build up momentum, uh, have these conversations, challenge ourselves, because even when you think you have it right, you don't. It's like that commitment to learning that's in our values. So we're, we're constantly doing that for ourselves. Um, as a network and we, we push ourselves. So, you know, I don't think that we're a network that thinks we haven't figured out. We have this agenda that we're trying to, to push on the national scene to make those influences, but how we show up together, how we are co-creating these things are, are all opportunities for us to, uh, to really move the needle on, you know, place-based justice, uh, move the needle on community engagement as anti-racism, as uh, anti-oppressive. And so those are really good opportunities and a shameless plug as I am on kind of the national strategy, national influence committee, um, there is going to be an opportunity later on, I think in the, in, in this session to uh, think about different committees that you may want to be participating on and that, that is a good one and we're just getting started um so um there's not gonna there's be a lot of room for your voice so if you have ideals about like how you'd like to see our field move that would be a, a good place to spend some time um and i also one thing i'll also share about myself uh, for jennifer and aaron they already know this but you know i'm not known for brevity so uh give <laughs> give me the the wave <laughs> when the time comes um the other big piece is the network that, that we're building. Like, you know, there's a great LinkedIn network. There's great opportunities for uh, white accountability circles, BIPOC healing circles. Um, and for me, you know, again, being in this field as long as I have been, justice work is, is hard and, and not oftentimes it doesn't feel very re rewarding, um, uh, to be quite honest. Like, you know, it's uh, self-care, taking care of yourself, surrounding yourself with people that can motivate and, and, and help you take up this work is something that's really been uh, instrumental to me, especially in these last few years with COVID happening, uh, uh, the last administration in, in office, it, it, you know, if it weren't for groups like the uh, Place-Based Justice Network and, and colleagues that are, I'm seeing their faces right here on this screen, you know, uh, encouraging us, knowing that there's other people doing this work because, you know, one of the Dr. King quotes I remind myself of often is like, you know, you don't do this work um, because you wanna win, you do it because it's right. And like, you know, having people beside you doing that work, uh, building the community, it makes a process uh, a joy to be a part of. And again, to that other value, it helps me continue to grow constantly. Uh, it's work that I, I'm 
perpetually doing. And because we have great organization from um, uh, the team over in Seattle, uh, Aaron Burrows leading that, like the, the LinkedIn, uh, the, the YouTube videos, all the resources that are available to the network are, are, have all been really, really wonderful. Uh, participation in shared governments, governance. Um, again, uh, I think I mentioned this already. We're not a network that has it all figured out. We are a network that really does value the input of its uh, member institutions. Um, I, I think there are networks, and sometimes you want to be in a network that where you can feel led. Um, you know, there's a there's a place for every institution, no matter where you're at. If you're coming in and thinking you have all these great ideals and you want to help push the network, that's great. If you're an institution that is, uh, I think my institution needs to be challenged more, and I hope the network helps us do that, that's great too. There, there's a, a lot of space uh, for everybody. It's, a, it's an open table, and we're, we're hopeful uh, that you show up the way you need to show up, the way you want to show up, the way you can contribute the most. Uh, because I do think one of the things that we want to emphasize is this is an active group. Uh, we uh, do uh, rely heavily on you know participation in the committees, participation on steering the committees and 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 leading. Uh, but we also uh, need to hear where our challenges are, and so uh, not just as a network, but where the challenges are in our field that we can start to address and, and think differently. Uh, contribute to the national movement of anti-oppression through place-based community engagement, uh, putting the network values into actions. And I was sharing this with my last small group. Though. One of the things that I love about the network is all those values that were shared earlier on, on the slides, ones we just talked about. Um, you know, it's great to have those values, but like, how do you implement them? How deliberately are you going about trying to, to make sure that there's space to do that? And, you know, the example that I use is that, that first one around intersectionality and, and identity in that the, the network was very keen on noticing in itself that, you know, it was largely represented by white identifying folks. Um, and how do we make space for, for more professionals of color in this field? Uh, to take up leadership roles because we are serving predominantly, or at least at my institution, black and brown communities. Uh, and how do we, how would we address that? And so with and, uh, the work of Kent and, and Aaron and the folks at Seattle, they were able to get a grant from Annie Casey, uh, which enabled us to start a next generation fellows uh, leadership program, which uh, recruited from our member institutions, uh, you know, BIPOC professionals, to join and uh, develop themselves as leaders. It's evolving a lot now until I think it's gonna be more of a collective uh, of BIPOC folks in, in the institution, uh, just so we can start to uplift those voices and create space uh, for them on this thing. So again, a commitment and uh, congruence with the values that we've laid out, I think is a very important portion of how this work uh, shows up because you know we can't ask faculty to do it, we can't ask our community partners to do it, we can't ask students to do it unless we're willing to do it ourselves. And and I think uh, we do hold ourselves accountable uh, on that end. Um, I want to stop talking now because I, I know I'm on a time boundary uh, and try to get some voices. And I know we we've talked in small groups and we've chatted a little bit, but if, if there's something that's resonating with you that you you want to share and you want to put on the table right now to kind of model how this network works, uh, we're all contributing, uh, something that resonates with you, some benefits that you're looking forward to, or if you have any questions, uh, this would be a, a good spot to, to bring those and name those now. Hey, hey, John, uh, I just wanted to kind of weigh in and say that I'm, I'm relatively new to the network. And um, I, I've just been really, really pleased with how open I think the network has been for involvement. And I feel like anytime I've been thinking about joining a network, um, you know, I, I always think about like, what can they do for me, you know, and I think this is very much a network of like, I feel like I can bring something to the group and I can get something out of the group. So I feel like there's been an openness to like ideas for suggested speakers or conversations or like, hey, I have passion around this and I'd like to get involved. Um, I don't know, I've just always been welcome with like kind of open arms in addition to like the regular meetings that you all do. So I don't know, I feel like this is, if you're just looking at this for like a transactional, like what can the network do for me? You know, you might wanna reconsider 
I'm thinking about a little bit more of a two-way street of a, like, what can I get and what can I also offer? I've just found an openness to that. So that's what I'd like to add. Thank you, Gavin. That, that also made me think uh, about it in terms of like the things that you put on those original chats, like, you know, how much of it was about transformative work, justice and, and community. Um, and again, being at my institution and not to, you know, throw shade at USD, I think a lot of our institutions are like, you know, we're, you know, older institutions that are kind of stuck in our, in our ways and like, you know, to be, you know, kind of going skating, uh, uh, skating uphill, it feels like uh, oftentimes, um, you know, to be able to surround yourself with, with a network of folks that can kind of help, help you along, help you skate up that hill uh, and help push you and actually just resonate with you, I think is, is one of the, the beautiful things about this network, for sure. Any other thoughts from new members or maybe even some reflections from folks that um, are uh, have gotten a lot out of the network already? I'll add uh, real quick too. I was telling um, folks in our breakout room that um, I participated in the summer um, initiative with uh, some team members here at Towson. And um, it just really opened up some really strong critical conversations for our group internally, which I feel like have emboldened some of my colleagues to actually feel much more comfortable in dialogue around these spaces going forward. So just in the short time of two or three months, it's been really nice to see that and encouraging those conversations. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah. I mean I feel like those conversations aren't always the easiest to have either. Um, and like to know that, you know, there's a lot of thought being put into them and, and to, uh, to make space for them because I would say if it exists in the system, it exists in here somewhere too. So even within our, our own center, so, you know, these conversations happen and, and to think about this work as needing allies as well, um, because, you know, we're not doing it in the vacuum. We're not just pushing up against them. And there's a, a, another side uh, that is, you know, anti-CRT or however you want to name it that that wants to uh, kind of diminish the, the the part of education that that is re very reflective and responsive to the, the way the world is and the, the systems dynamics that, that, that exist. Um, so putting yourself in a network that can help you know articulate that message and push that agenda forward is, is always going to be really really useful. Um, oh, Erica? Yeah, I'm Erica and I'm at Creighton and I would say that um, I've been to multiple events and I've been able to model some of the practices that we've used within the network in my classroom because I teach a, a white privilege course and I do racial caucusing and healing circles now based on what we sort of did as a group and um, I feel like it really has sort of, it, it certainly adds transformative pedagogy to be able to um, to split the students and have them have those honest conversations in addition to the academic ones as well. So that's one thing that I've learned that I really appreciated. Thank you, Erica. Maybe we have time for one more comment and then I will transition back over to the team. Or we can just transition back over to the team. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you all so much uh, for being here and, and becoming part of the network. I, I'm very much looking forward to working with and, and connecting with you all, hopefully in person soon. Uh, as much as I love the Zoom and having my notes right in front of me, uh, it, it's, it's really nice to be with people. Thank you, John. Aaron, am I up, am I up next? Okay. Uh, Jen, time check, oh, 11.45. Okay, I'll try my best. Yeah, you can, well, we just wanna make sure we have time for questions and conversation at the end. So it's all right, you're good, Anthony. Cool, cool, I'll try to get through these and a lot of, a lot of great things to share. So my yeah. name is Anthony, yeah, I use he, him pronouns. Excuse my voice, I'm coming off of a sickness. So I'm a little raspy today, 
raspy than usual. Um, but I'm the assistant director over at the Center for Community Engagement at Gonzaga University. <clears throat> um, today, in this context, I sit on the PBJN steering committee, and I'm also a Next Generation Fellow. And I want to thank you all for joining us today and share a few of the offerings we have for our network this year. Um, the first I want to talk about are these Place-Based Justice Network salons. And these salons are means to continue our learning in the breaks between our summer, in our summer institutes, our winter leader retreats, and all the other places that we connect. Uh, our purpose statement as a network says that we're a learning community with a set of common aspirations and goals. And so as a learning community, we gather to advance our individual and collective knowledge and do justice to our specific contexts. Um, these used to be called continuous learning Zoom calls. We've changed them to salons rather intentionally and a really great definition that we found that just made me laugh uh, for a salon as a gathering states that a salon is a gathering of people where they amuse one another and increase their knowledge through conversation. Uh, and so for me, uh, I think the spirit of these spaces is that we learn from one another, that they're a lot more interactive and dialogical rather than just sharing out somebody's cool idea, right? That it's, we come together with a challenge or something cool that we're working on that we want to improve and we work together to do that. So this year we're structuring our salons in a little bit more of an interactive way um, that we hope will engage our collective experience as a community as we support one another in addressing our challenges and possibilities of our work. Um, our first salon will be on October 27th, where we'll be introducing a peer coaching model process where participants will bring their own challenge or opportunity they're wrestling with uh, and experience a blend of support and challenge from peers in the room. So again, this model we're gonna introduce on the 27th and try to take forward into future sessions together. Um, great, and more information about future sessions will be in our newsletter that we'll talk about in a little bit too. Um, Aaron, at any point, if you have anything to add, please do. The December Place Based Justice Leadership Retreat on Friday, uh, December 10th from 9.30 to 12.30 uh, Pacific time, we'll be holding our annual Place Based Justice Network Leadership Retreat. This three hour retreat will be open to all members active on our working groups and will be hosted via Zoom, if I'm not mistaken, it's a virtual, virtual gathering. Um, and it's an opportunity to come together and help shape the future of our network. So um, if you're a part of our working groups, we invite you to attend that as well. Next, we have our Next Generation Fellowship. So starting in 2019, the Next Generation Fellowship was designed to assist emerging professionals of color in the community engagement field in thinking critically about who they are, who they're called to become, and how they can find support they need and reach their goals within this field. Um, in 2019, I was selected as one of the inaugural fellows and I found it to be one of the most meaningful professional experiences I've ever had. Um, and through this fellowship, I met some of my closest friends in the field, uh, really brilliant colleagues with heart and expertise that have shaped my work in really critical ways, but have also just been really good friends to me and, and, and colleagues. Um, we've had the chance to dive deep on issues facing people of color in our field and have helped push network in critical ways. John, is there any more information on the next iteration of this yet? Not quite yet. Uh, it is evolving. It's going to be less a, a leadership program and more of a collective and using some of the voices that we have. Uh, we found uh, that you know, uh, folks like Anthony didn't need leadership development. They needed the space to put their thoughts in, in, into action. And like, you know, how do we uh, take those, those thoughts and run with them as opposed to uh, help you know, uh, foster them and uh, incubate them. So it's more information to come. Wonderful. Um, next, we have our BIPOC healing circles and our white affinity and accountability circles. So our intention for the healing circles is to provide a place where people of color can work together with their peers and their experiences of internalized racism for healing and to work on liberation. Um, BIPOC members of PBJN are invited to join one of our virtual healing circles. For our white affinity accountability circles, 
They meet monthly with the intention of building community and supporting accountability to unlearn racism and build our capacity to incorporate anti-racist efforts into our place-based work. Um, these meetings include resource sharing, skill building, community gathering, with a focus on addressing how racism works in our daily lives on individual, interpersonal, and structural levels. Um, we're currently working out the frequency of these gatherings, and we'll be sending out more information in the weeks to come. Summer Institute 2022. Um, our summer institutes are an annual opportunity for colleagues to gather and share strategies, lessons learned, and explore pressing questions about how to do our work. Um, every gathering so far has included framing from leaders in our field that embody the values of our network and model the practice that we hope to explore. This past summer, we hosted the Institute virtually, but we have typically traveled to member campuses and host the Institute in person. Uh, we're working out the details for this upcoming um, Institute. Some of you might be on a subcommittee for that. <laughs> so more information to come and we'll be sharing that in the coming weeks. Finally, we have our monthly newsletter. Um, we send out a monthly newsletter. Aaron Burroughs sends out a monthly newsletter. <laughs> um, and occasional special announcements to our colleagues. Uh, you can access the archives of the network's uh, emails online. Um, if you have an opportunity or a story you'd like to share, we want to hear from you. We want to lift up what's going on at our campuses across the country. What's something that's been happening on, in, in your work? Uh, what are challenges that you're facing that you might want to write about and share? What are opportunities for jobs, job postings? Uh, we put those all in the newsletter. If you have those opportunities, please send them over to Aaron Burroughs at burrow, er at seattle.edu. <laughs> cool. Finally, we have working groups uh, this semester, this year, uh, for folks to join up with. And we have an interest form that we'd like to ask people to fill out. Um, we will have, I believe, about 12 different working groups this year, uh, all focused on different parts of the work we do collectively as a network. So if you're interested in being part of that process, um, the, the different categories are in the form uh, are put in the chat. And it's a great opportunity to kind of co-create this space together. It also allows you to come to the leadership, leadership retreat as a member of one of these working groups. Erin, anything you wanna to add to this part? Yeah, thank you so much, Anthony. And especially with your voice. I'm really <laughs> sorry. To carry. I appreciate you. To go through and my voice is so tough so tough today so thanks for bearing with me y'all um excellent thank you um you know we've grown so much as a network over the last three years and we're moving more and more into these kinds of structures but i do want to emphasize that the entire network is volunteer run i'm technically the only one who has this written into my job description and it's only a small percentage of my job so um, please do consider signing up for a working group. Um, as Anthony said, there's many opportunities. We're also open to your ideas. Um, so you'll see there are some um, other boxes on that interest form. So if you have a, a strong project idea, we do welcome that kind of contribution. Um, and also if you just wanna take it easy and ease into the network, if this is your first year, that is also okay too. Um, just a, a reminder that for all of our our offerings, including the salons, those um, racial healing and accountability circles, those, sorry for the drilling in the background, by the way. Um, those are open to any employee, student leader, or community partner of your campus. Um, and they're also open to folks who are not institutional members yet, um, because we wanna make sure that this is an inclusive network. We're really building a national movement. So if you have colleagues at other institutions who you think would be really moved um, and emboldened by what we're doing, as a national network, please invite them in. Um, they can receive our monthly newsletter and truly are invited to everything that we're doing. And I'll mute myself. I think we're near the end here so we can um, open it up for conversation. I wanna thank um, everyone who offered their voice already today, um, whether you're um, part of our steering committee and helping to present today or offering your, your voice in the chat and um, your ideas and comments. So yes, any other things that folks might wanna 
offer this morning or afternoon, depending on your location. Hey, uh, Aaron, um, I'm on the phone, but is it okay if I just add something real quick? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I just wanted to do a small pitch for the sustainability committee. Uh, if you think deeply, of, if you want to think deeply about sustaining this network, we would absolutely love to have you. We're a small but mighty committee. So please consider getting involved, especially if you feel strongly about this network. Thanks. Similarly, um, all of the member engagement uh, pieces of the network were, were mentioned in our offerings. So if you saw an offering that you're interested in participating in, but also participating in helping shape, we welcome you to join one of those subcommittees as well. There's a question in the chat about where to get more information with the working groups. And I think the interest form will um, flesh out probably a lot of questions, but feel free to ask any specific questions now, or you can follow up with me or any of the other um, steering committee members. And I'll drop the link in the chat one more time. And will you be putting that link in an upcoming newsletter too, perhaps, Erin? I will, in fact. It's also on our LinkedIn group. Plug for that. Um, we have over 150 folks in our LinkedIn group, and you'll see a a lot of job opportunities. Um, so if you have an opening on your campus, or if you're looking to change up where you're doing this work, um, you know there's definitely some opportunities there. Um, but I would love to see more folks really using that as a sounding board for what's coming up for you. Um, is there something that you're wrestling with? Are you looking for any resources? So definitely some brilliant minds all in one place there and you can participate at your leisure. I know we touched a lot about- Acquire. Sorry, sorry, Gavin. No, no, I'm just saying it's a quiet group. <laughs> I was going to say, I know that we talked a lot about our values and all about the what we're doing this year. Um, but I just wanted to share that I think I said this in one of like the new member videos, but like this has been one of the most authentic networks I've found. And there's a lot of networks out there doing work, you know, across the country involved in service learning or civic engagement or community engagement. And they all have their place and they're all really wonderful for different reasons. Um, but in this network, I've just found community, which is like funny to think about um, in like all the other networks being community-based, but like I found it most deeply here. Um, and like, I can't tell you how many times I'm like called over to like Roxanne De La Torre over at Fordham to like ask her about the minutes happening here in Spokane, Washington or like call over to John just to get like a hype up because I need like a, I need like a, hey, you're not, you're not horrible at this work, right? <laughs> I need like a little pick me up, you know? Um, and I think that's a testament to like the people who are already in the group, but also like how the table has been laid out. And there's a real opportunity to connect in real ways um, and lead with that humility that I think is rare in networks like these. So anyway, wanted to share like the heart of why I love this space. Thank you, Anthony. Gavin had to sign off, but I also want to make a plug for when you're traveling. It's a great way to grab dinner or a cocktail with a colleague um, from this network. Gavin reached out to me when he was recently in Seattle and we hung out. Um, and so just that you know, organic friendship building. Um, truly, we hope this is a place where you find your people and there's many ways to build out those connections. Feels like we're maybe at a natural pause point. Um, I can, I'm willing to stay on the on the call. Um, probably Aaron B, you're the main host, if you don't mind, so that if folks want to just chat privately, kind of as we leave the room, if you want to chat. <laughs> <laughs>